Live Better and Longer with The Fitness Show, hosted by fitness expert, author, and TV personality, Fitz Kohler. She'll tell you why diets are dumb, supplements are snake oil, and the truth about how you can earn a lean, hard, pain-free, and athletic body. Now for our favorite bossy blonde, Fitz Kohler. Well, hi team, I'm Fitz Kohler, your very jet lag, noisy person from fitness.com, and welcome to The Fitness Show. They say what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Not today. Nope. Nope. I am not keeping <laughs> this debauchery to myself because it is too damn good. That's right. I've got a tale to tell and you're going to like it. You're going to like it a lot. Okay. Before I get started, if you haven't done so yet, click like, please review this podcast when you're done. Hopefully you say only nice things, but I'm even up for a grouchy word or two if you're gonna say something nice also i am yikes i think i am 11 days away from my dancing with the stars performance as of this recording so white knuckling life right now i am training so hard i I'm, I'm staring down the barrel of that gun i will be performing live in front of about a thousand people at legacy event space, whatever, right outside Gainesville, Florida. And then you can live stream it. So if you want to watch me sink or swim <laughs> on that night, you can go to champagnegala.org and the entire performance starts at 7 p.m. There are 16 pairs performing, 16 pros matched with 16 average Joes. The first eight will begin at seven. There will be an 8 p.m. intermission. And then about 8.30, the latter half of the evening will get started. I'm in the 8.30 group. So here's the deal. Go to champagnegala.org. But if you do, please donate. Please donate. I try not to ask for anything from you guys. All I want to do is give, give, give. Give fitness advice. Give encouragement. Give it support. Give hugs at finish lines. And uh, corporations pay my salary. So I don't want anything from you. And in fact... I don't get any of this money, which suits me fine because it's going to a great cause. But if you would be so lovely as to even donate $5, I have such a huge reach between my podcast and all my social media connections. It would it would mean a lot. So even $5 goes a long way. If you donate $37 or more, I will record your own private go for you. That's right. Your insert name here, set, go. I will bellow that for you, give you a motivational message, and you can use that at the start of all of your workouts moving forward. But anyways, uh, I have rehearsal today. I have rehearsal tomorrow. Next week, I will rehearse. Uh, There's some stunts involved in my routine. My partner, Tucker, has had his back out of order for a few weeks, so we haven't been able to practice those stunts. So I'm hoping we can practice them today. Anyways, it's all very, very exciting, but... <laughs> It's coming, it's coming quick. So I hope you're sitting wherever you are thinking good thoughts for me and also donating, please. And thank you. And if you go to fitsness.com, right on the cover, there's a big banner that says donate here for Fitz's Dancing with the Stars performance. And that's the easiest way to make that happen. Okay, I went to Vegas this weekend. I went to Vegas, I was uh, hired to speak at the Young Survival Coalition Conference. And the Young Survivor Survival Coalition is there to support women and men who have been diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of 40. And uh, what, what an important group. I mean, there's so many different groups. And you know, I work with American Cancer Society and the Donna Foundation and uh, many other cancer organizations to support all the people who need the support. Firsthand experience, I can tell you, cancer is rotten. It's a zero stars experience. I give it two thumbs down. There's nothing nice about it. And not only is the cancer care and the cancer experience really hard, but it makes every other aspect of your life more challenging. Do you need to work to pay bills? Most people do. Uh, Maybe you're too sick. Maybe you've had surgery and you're out of work for three weeks. So uh, YSC will come in and help you pay your bills, help you have food, whatever you need. They're, they're, They're a very special organization. And I was only modestly familiar with them. I used to be a spokesperson slash ambassador for Oakley 
Oakley women many years ago, and our cause was YSC. So we were actually working to support them many years ago. So it was a treat that they invited me to come speak, and uh, I ended up doing some other things, and I'll get to. But I want to tell you that I've had some strange experiences with chocolates on my last two flights. So last weekend, I was in Sacramento, and when I was flying home in the Sacramento airport, there's a Centurion Lounge. And so I went in there and I had breakfast. And then on the way out, they had a bowl of Andy's candies. <laughs> and so what did I do? I grabbed four or five Andy's candies because that's what you have to do. They're so delicious. And then I put it in my pocket, my jacket pocket. And then I, I don't know, I wandered around, used the loo, and I got in line to uh, board the plane. <laughs> then it's maybe 10 minutes after I put those Andy's candies in my pocket, I reached into my pocket. I was cold. I just want to put my hand in my pocket. And then I felt all the gook. That's right. It was a chocolatey catastrophe in my pocket because what I forgot is that there was some hot hands. Those hand warmers were in my pocket. <laughs> so I, I just cooked. I cooked those Andy's candies and I was not only grossed out because my hand was all yucky with chocolate, but then I was sad that I didn't have the Andy's candies to eat, which was a total crisis. So <laughs> anyway, that was ridiculous and no big whoop, right? It's just chocolate on your hand, chocolate in your pocket. So I went to the bathroom, wiped it off and I survived. And then this weekend, flying home from Vegas, they had a bowl of Hershey Kisses at the gate while boarding. So I grabbed a few. I think I grabbed three or four Hershey Kisses thinking I'd spread them out throughout the day. And I sit down on the plane. I might have had one Hershey kiss. And then I, I don't know, I get on my computer, do whatever I'm going to do. And about an hour later, I get up to go use the loo. And I look down and there's a smushed Hershey kiss on my seat. That's right. One had fallen between my legs on under my thigh. And I sat on it. <laughs> it melted. <laughs> so there's a man sitting on the plane next to me. And I said, uh, I just sat on that Hershey kiss. Would you want to look in to see if I got chocolate on the back of my pants? So what I was thinking is, please, God, don't let this be right at my tush because, ew, right? <laughs> and he goes, uh, it's kind of on your inner thigh. And I was like, okay. So I went to the bathroom and uh, thankfully there was a full length mirror in this bathroom, all hell Delta. And I was able to get one of those paper towels and wet it and scrub most of the chocolate off of my inner thigh area. It was ridiculous. And so what are the odds? What are the odds? Two trips in the row, two chocolate catastrophes. And I'm actually hoping for a third because that means someone's giving me more chocolate. And as you know, I do love milk chocolate. If I do not have a piece of chocolate on a particular day, I consider it a sad day. So chocolate on your pants is so much more delightful than cancer, right? Who cares about chocolate on your pants? And who cares even if someone thought I pooped my pants because their opinion doesn't matter, especially if it's an opinion of strangers. And it's, if it would make someone laugh, then it would be all worth it. So anyways, I wanted to fill you in on that. I don't know why, but I did. I thought it was, I thought it was awesome. So I go to Vegas on Friday and we stayed at the Virgin Hotel, which is not on the strip, but it's still quite lovely. It's a big old casino with a big conference center, et cetera. And I arrived in the morning and I was speaking at 1.45. Now, my presentation, the room I was in was a special retreat for metastatic breast cancer patients and survivors. And if you're unfamiliar, met metastatic is the term they give for stage four cancer patients and they will always have breast cancer. They will live with breast cancer. And reminder, these women are, are less than 40. Right? And there were so many of them in their 20s that were already diagnosed with stage four metastatic breast cancer. So very special group of women. And that's, that's a, a heavy pill to swallow, right? Now, what I can tell you is I have met so many women who live with stage four metastatic breast cancer and are living large at the Donna Marathon, uh, Donna National Marathon to finish breast cancer, the one I announced in early February in Florida. Every time a survivor crosses the finish line, I grab them and I say, hey, what's your name? How far out are you? And usually they'll say, I'm Susie Q. I'm seven years cancer free, which is great. And many of them, though, would grab me and say, I'm Roberta and I am 
25 years living with metastatic breast cancer or 20 years with stage four breast cancer. So there is hope for these women. Breast cancer is one of the most well-researched, well-funded uh, type of cancers. And because of that, the cure rates are extraordinary. So I don't know if there is necessarily a cure for these women. And I, I do hope that with science and progress, there will be. I'm hoping that two years from now, we will be at this YSC conference together celebrating the actual cancer-free diagnosis for the women I spoke to on Friday. But anyways, this is what we're dealing with. I think there was probably 80 to 100. I didn't do counting when I was in there. Uh, but my topic was your healthy cancer come back. And it's just delightful. I love being able to share these messages to help women and men take control of their of, of the things that they can, right? Because when you get diagnosed, you feel like your life's been thrown in spin cycle. And so I get to stand there and tell them that there, there is a possibility for them to do better and be better. And, you know, there are things we can't control. There are things we are. Of course, you can weaponize exercise and nutrition to make your life better and to reduce the likelihood that cancer spreads. So it's very important messaging, but it's also, we say it's a club no one wants to be a part of. Like what idiot puts their hand up and says, yeah, I want to be in the breast cancer club. Nobody does. But the silver linings are a plenty. And certainly this weekend, silver linings for all of us were each other, right? It's really kind of refreshing to stand in a group of people, of peers. And I don't know, like there's this thing with my armpit. <laughs> and if you have had breast cancer, if you had the lymph nodes removed, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But my cancer was on my left breast. So I had a lumpectomy and they removed a bunch of lymph nodes from my left armpit area and they radiated that space. So I'm numb. I don't have any feeling in that armpit area or down the back of my tricep towards my elbow, completely numb. So when I shave my right armpit, I'm pretty cavalier about it. It's not a big deal. I shave, 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 move on with my day. But then when I go to the left side, I can't feel it. And in my mind, I'm going to just gouge out my armpit with real aggressive shaving. So I have to act very gingerly, right? My actions are very ginger. So anyways, it's just, it's nice to be in a room of other people. And I say, who is the armpit thing? And everybody has the armpit thing. And everybody loves talking about the armpit thing and laughing about the armpit thing. So it, it was great. It was great. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, if you sit there and think about it, when we were all in the ballroom together, probably about 500 of us, you look around and think, oh my gosh, almost everybody in here has had or has breast cancer. That's demented. I mean, it could really upset you, but there was nothing upsetting about this weekend. Uh, Young Survival Coalition did a phenomenal job organizing the retreat and the conference and the courses. And, and there was some serious stuff and some informational sessions that really mattered. And then there was a lot of fun and it was it work in the day and then party at night. And, and even during the day, we had a whole lot of fun. It's just a very special group. And I was very proud to be a part of it. So this is, this is what you probably want to know. You saw the title of this show and you said, I'm going to listen because <laughs> it's called announcing in my undies. So I was told that at this conference, they were going to have a pajama party and lingerie fashion show on Friday night. And I think I was speaking with the executive director when she told me about this. And I said, okay, well, do you have a host? Do you have a host for your fashion show? And she says, well, someone on my staff was going to do it, but it certainly would make sense since you are a professional host to tie you in. So originally we connected her Stafford Debbie, who's very talented, wonderful, wonderful woman who creates such a fabulous party. And at some point, Debbie said, you know what, I, I checked you out on YouTube and I want you to announce the whole thing, please. And thank you. And she had a whole bunch of other stuff to do. So it, it worked out well. And I was chomping at the bit because, you know, I like for things to be not only fun, but rowdy. I thought this is the perfect group to have the perfect rowdy, rambunctious time. So my first game plan was perfect music because music is always my right-hand man. If you've been at my starter finish lines, you know that the music is very precise and I'm able to whip people into a frenzy. 
thanks to not only my big mouth, but the, the energy provided by this incredible music. So I was very, very deliberate when I chose music for the fashion show. Uh, but then I thought, well, the fashion show is about them. And how do I how do I turn a greater spotlight on them? And so I created these little handout sheets. It was the runway q and I left them on all the tables. And again, at this point, it's ballroom setup with tables of, I think, with eight to 10 chairs around them. And I just put the Q&A sheets there. And so as women started coming in, everyone was in either pajamas or bathrobes as they arrived or onesies. And so they instinctively just started filling out the Q&A. The Q&As asked questions like, what is your name? What is your hometown? What are your hobbies? And then each sheet varied. I had four different sheets going around. So they were asked well, who their Hollywood crush is. If their life was a TV show, what would the theme song be? Uh, where does side effect to breast cancer? There was blah, 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 a variety of questions on that sheet. So they filled them out and we had the first hour. I was not a part of the first hour. The first hour was a guest speaker on sexual health. She represented a sex toy business. I guess that's the best way to describe it. And so she was really lovely and she stood up in front of the group and talked about this and that. And as you can imagine, cancer, no matter what kind of cancer you have, it can affect your sex life. You're as, as the patient, you're sick in so many different types of cancers, your body is altered. Perhaps you've had amputations or additions, or you now have big scars. As the romantic partner of a cancer patient, perhaps you're really worried about hurting this person that you love. And maybe the, the chemistry between you has been altered because of this cancer nightmare. So she was really, uh, really gifted at talking about real life scenarios and then how to and spice up your life. And with or without a partner, you should be able to have some fabulous sex, right? <laughs> We've, it's 2024, folks. You can have some sex even without a partner. I'm, I'm going to share that with you. But she she was great. So that was the first hour. And it actually got a little de a little deep because some of the women were coming up with questions and they were crying and, and their sex lives have been altered and it's not easy and not fun. So things were a little heavy and then that ended and then it was my turn. That's right. It was Fitzgolder's turn to take the start and finish line experience and bring it to the lingerie runway show. Now, what I didn't tell you is when our women walked in the room and the room was exclusively for breast cancer survivors and then maybe a couple of staffers who were women. There was no male bartenders. There was no, they call them co-survivors, but maybe your husband or your sister or your mom came. They were not welcome. The only people in this room have had breast cancer at some point. And there were hundreds, not everybody at the conference showed up. They, they, some of them went over to have like skincare, do facials and things. But the people who showed up, they were very excited to be there. And I would say there was 200, 250. And Spencer's and a lingerie company called Ana Ono, who designs bras for women who have had surgical have had breast cancer issues. In fact, their bras are now being sold in Victoria's Secret, Nordstrom, and some other retailers. They have bras with only one cup. They have bras with no cups. It's just, they've, they've done a, spe a wonderful job. And their owner, I believe her name is Dora. She she had breast cancer and that what that's what inspired her to do this. She was a breast cancer patient who was into fashion and she created this line. So just a, kudos to her. But between Ana Ono and Spencer's, like the gift store in the mall, they donated tons of lingerie, brand new, beautiful lingerie, bustiers and bras and undies and one pieces, real sexy stuff. And so uh, our women got to go and just choose. And then a, there was a step and repeat in the corner of the room so they could go back there and change into it. And so uh, we get started with the fashion show or I get started with the fashion show. And what I do is I tell everybody, I'm like, get out of your chairs, leave those tables and line the runway, bring your chairs in. This is a fashion show. You're not going to be over there. Come in close. You're the fan. So uh, they do, they do. And boy, do I love a receptive audience. I love people who can follow directions and they totally did. They ran right up to the runway. And then I started playing some music and told them to get in line. And I, I probably had about 10 people in line at a time. And 
I get my first little handout. So it's the 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 model. We're going to call them each a model because that's where they were for the moment. The model would hand the paper to Debbie. Debbie would give it to me. And I would say, and here comes Susie Q from Albuquerque and blah, blah, blah. Her hobbies are this. And she loves Jason Momoa. And she gets on the runway and just tosses her shirt to the side and tosses her bottoms and starts strutting and people lose their marbles. It was absolute chaos between the music and their rowdy energy and our models. It was so much fun and it got wilder and wilder as we went on. I would say model number one was sedate compared to model number 50. And it was, it was, it was so fantastic because again, so many of these women have been physically altered and, and in their real life, they feel weird, right? They feel less than or strange, or hopefully some of them feel damn good, right? But some of them, they have either no breasts and they have scars or they have tattoos or they have one breast only, or they have one real breast and one fake breast. And then, or they have two real breasts, but they've had their nipples removed or they've had tattoos added or they've had fake nipples added, but there's, it's just change, right? I, I've been honest with you guys. I did not have the, a mastectomy. I had a lumpectomy. So they removed a golf ball size of tissue from the lower left side of my left breast. And right now they look great. I'm so fortunate. I can't believe they're great, great boobs. And, uh, you know, of course, chemo whacked me. That was my hard part. This part I got out of jail free on. I, I did not have to have the hard, hard stuff. So many of these women have had, but it was perfection. They stepped on the front of that runway and then they became whoever they wanted to be. And everything about them was right. And nobody was judging anybody's thighs or tummies or rear ends or anything. We were just so excited to see her, whoever she was at that moment, feeling fabulous and confident and beautiful. And I mean, <laughs> it can make me cry. Just, you know, this cancer thing is hard. And sometimes I I think that that, that fits Kohler from 2019 and 20, that she was someone else. It's, I, I really have a, I'm a disconnected person right now. It's hard to believe that was me. But when I see them, like my empathy, it just is really, it's really painful knowing what they've actually been through. So to see them celebrate themselves and to be the celebrity and this and the superstar for the moment and to just see them walking on water was, uh, it was fabulous. It was so fabulous. So they just, it was so wild. They were strutting, they were dancing. Some of them went full blown like buck naked down to a, a thong and it was outstanding. Oh, mind you, zero cameras, zero phones. It was a photo free evening, a video free e evening. And um, gosh, it was just so great. And yeah, the cost, I'd say costumes, just the lingerie was so hot. And yeah, it was just, just fun, 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 fun. I, I could, if I could go back, I would go back every night of my life to relive that experience with more women who needed that experience. It's just such a pleasure. And we were laughing and they were fun and they were funny. And again, there was one chick, I, I think her, well, I'm not going to say her name, but her, she's, her hair is just starting to peep back in and she had a little silky shorts and a button down top night uh, pajamas. And she just got down on her hands and knees and crawled all the way down the runway, all sexy. I mean, it was just hilarious. So we get through about 80%. Well, I'm going to back up. We finished the first two songs and I tell everybody, I go, stop. I turn off the music and they'll just look at me thinking, what is going on? I said, stop it. And then I hit play on Baby Got Back. And all we had to hear was, oh my God. And the whole room sang along, rapped along. It was, I just keep using the big words, right? It was a riot. It was so perfect. And that's one of those songs you just, uh, you know, it's it's going to be a barn burner. And here's interesting. So when I, cre I mix all of my music for races, all of it. I purchase it and I mix it on a mixer. So it's custom made every time. And with 
baby got back it it says it's the explicit version of course once he starts singing there is nothing other than but right he's talking about big butts but it's that intro where she says oh my god becky look at her butt blah 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 and she goes she's just she looks like a total prostitute which that's kind of rude and then it says she's just so black and so what i did is i muted those words i muted prostitute and I muted black. Of course, everyone's so touchy. <laughs> I think most black girls dig it. They like the song. But anyways, I thought I'm just going to, I'm going to mute those things and be cautious. But when I was transferring the mix from my computer to my iPad, I couldn't get that clean version, that altered version of Baby Got Back onto my iPad. So I left the quote unquote explicit version there just to see how things played out. Well, mind you, the hour before we started the fashion runway show, so many F-bombs. Oh my gosh, F-bomb after F-bomb. <laughs> Everybody was coarse. So at that point I thought, all right, fine, I'm leaving it in. And I'm glad I did because it was just, it, it was so great. So that was the first pause. And then we get about 80% through the runway show. And I still have a, a bunch of girls in line. But once again, I said, stop. I didn't turn off the music. I said, stop, stop, stop. And everybody looked up and I waited. And then I said, it's my turn. <laughs> so I took off my pajamas. That's right. I had, I had long sleeve pants, pajamas, and I pulled them off and I stripped them down. And I was wearing a little black panties and a pretty little lacy black bra. And I leapt off of my stage and I introduced myself. I said, I am Fitz Kohler from Gainesville, Florida. And I love making happy noise. And so they, they were so sweet. They all were also very ex enthusiastic for my runway walk. And I got to the end and then I turned around and I sprinted back to the stage to, so I could intro the next person. But that was absolutely my first time announcing in my undies. And <laughs> it wasn't so bad. I continued the rest of the show in my bra and undies because why would I get dressed? Why would I get dressed in a room full of uh, mostly naked women who are just feeling great about themselves. So I felt pretty fabulous on the microphone in my undies, and I am not opposed to announcing in my undies again. You never know. It may happen now. It likely won't happen at a race. <laughs> it likely won't happen at a pickleball tournament, but I'm open, right? I'm open. There are, there are options out there, and yeah, I'm willing to take them. So yeah, that was cool. That was cool. So uh, we got to final model. And then I told everybody, I said, y'all, this runway is now your dance floor. Get on it. And they did. And it was, it was, it was heaven. It was so good. It was so good. It was the ultimate girls weekend. I went there knowing nobody, absolutely nobody. I did have one of my runners pop up, Tyler. She sang the anthem for us at the Monterey Bay half marathon a few years ago, and she's doing fabulous. But I left with a whole bunch of legit girlfriends, such nice, wonderful people I'm hoping to connect with <sighs> forever moving forward. Sunday morning before I flew out of Vegas, I taught a stretch class. I volunteered to do that. I said, I'm there, put me to work. And that was really cool. I haven't taught a fitness class in a very long time. And it was St. Patrick's Day. So we started off with a little St. Patrick's jig. And then we got down on the ground and we did all sorts of wonderful stretches. And that's a nice opportunity to get to know people. And I tell you what, if you go to these yoga classes and they play that, I don't know, Enya, and then they say weird words like namaste. If you like that, don't come to my stretching class because that's not my style. I think namaste is a very annoying word. And I don't know. I just like it to be fun. So even when it's stretching, we had fun, fun music and we had big, big laughs. And, you know, that's the type of thing that makes me feel whole is being with you and talking about or doing exercise, those are things that just, I don't know, make my life better. But it was awesome. And I want you to know that all of this good stuff is out there. So if you know a young woman or even a young man who's been diagnosed with breast cancer before the age of 40, I highly recommend visiting, I believe it's youngsurvivalcoalition.org. They're doing fantastic work. And I hope I get to be a part of their future events. It was great, great, great. Okay, what else do I have to tell you? Hmm. I think that's it. I think I covered it. Spend the rest of your day thinking about me announcing in my undies. I just want you to do that for me. And, and in your mind, make me look good. That's right. Whatever good means to you, 
make me look great. And uh, yeah, my mouth works completely fine without a shirt, <laughs> without pants. Fun, fun, fun. Oh, and uh, I did meet a fellow gator there, Angela Rose. She was awesome. Yeah. In fact, I met so many great friends. We're going to have more fun together in the future, I believe. So listen, song of the week. I've got to give it to Baby Got Back. That's right. Sir Mix a lot. You know you love it. You might pretend to be classier than that, but there's no way in hell you are. If you're listening to my show, there's no way you are classier than Sir Mix a lot's Baby Got Back. So please add that to your playlist this week. It'll it'll lighten up your life just a little bit. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to get out of here. If you haven't done so yet, please like, review, rate the show, say nice things, share with a friend, tell them you heard this great story about Fitz and her undies and everybody else has to hear it. And then please go to fitsness.com and click the button so you can donate to my Dancing with the Stars performance. Remember, even $5 would make a world of difference for me and obviously a world of difference for the Dance Alive National Ballet. And tune in March 30th, champagnegala.org, where once again, I will sink or swim in fabulous fashion. I love you all. Get to work. Bye, team. Mwah. Hi, this is Rudy Novotny, the voice of America's marathons. We all love how much running has benefited every aspect of our lives, so much so that most of us only wish we'd started sooner. Wouldn't it be wonderful to give the opportunity to children of today? Well, you can. The Morning Mile is a before-school walking and running program that gives children a chance to start each day in an active way while enjoying fun, music, and friends. That's every child, every day. It's also supported by a wonderful system of rewards, which keeps students highly motivated and frequently congratulated. Created by our favorite fitness expert, Fitz Kohler, morning milers across the country have run over 2 million miles and are having greater success with academics, behavior, and sports because of it. The morning mile is free to the child, free to the school, and is inexpensively funded by businesses or generous individuals. Help more kids get moving in the morning by visiting morningmile.com. Champion the program at your favorite school or find out more about sponsorship opportunities. That's morningmile.com. Long may you run.